Yes, sure. Yes, yes, yes.
Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, are we here? Hello. Uh, good evening to all. At first, I have offered my heartiest thanks to all members of Equinox for inviting me for inaugurations, the webinar on captive breeding and conservation of Indian vulture species. And also, I especially thanks to Swede Nakib, Jodhubet Borua for their hard working and interest on conservation of nature. Equinox is a social organization. It was born in Gulaghat. Now that organizations become international organizations, they perform various activities for the society. Now I welcome to Dr. Sosin P. Ranade, Assistant Director, Bombay National History, History Society, BNS. He is a scientist and hard worker. He has a good experience and long experience on conservation of missile, uh, conservation of vultures. He has published a lot of papers on conservation um, on vultures. Today we will hear uh, more valuable talk from him. We are looking forward. We will get more information from him. And also I welcome all the participants from world, India from world in this seminar. Without their help, the program will not be success. Now, uh, I have a question. Why they selected the topics, the captive breeding and conservation of vulture, Indian vulture species? Uh, uh, it will be very surprising to know their population, population of vultures in India. Until 1980, the vultures were very popular and common. Their populations, about 40 million in 1980. But it will be very surprising that their populations stopped, their population crashed by over 90 percent during mid-90s. By 70, 99 percent also are it out. It will be completely um, uh, wiped out within very short times. All uh, short times. Now um, uh, that is why that topic is very important. And uh, uh, today, for uh, this uh, topics, let me uh, inform about how many species are there in India. I will inform you that there are nine species <coughs> in India are generally found. These are oriental white black vultures, long bill vultures, cinder bill vultures. Red-headed vultures, Egyptian vultures, Himalayan vultures, Cinereous vultures, Red vultures, and Eurasian vultures. Out of that nine species, four species are critically endangered. One is endangered, others are threatened. Their population is numbered, very few nowadays. To see, the, uh, to see this problem, in 1909, Zazesel, Zulga Society of London, and BNS, together work to address the problems. They found that they found, and uh, there is a one drug that is called There is the one drug that is called 
diclofenac, which is main factor for uh, reducing their populations. Again, I want to inform that out of that nine species, three species, uh, that is white back vulture, long bill vulture, and cinder wheel vulture. Their population was 40 million in 1980. I have already mentioned the overall population again down to 90% during mid 90s, and by 2007 it is 99%. That is this species. Now, it's a very uh, important information. And uh, to solve this problem, I have also mentioned that uh, 99 Zoological Society of London and BNSU jointly work to address the problem. They found there's a one drug that is called. Uh, uh, which is used in uh, veterinary station uh, called that is called uh, diclofenoc. That diclofenoc is dangerous to vultures. After uh, discovering that one, uh, some uh, central zoo authority and BSU jointly uh, established some conservation center. Now in India, there is a nine centers. Also government has some uh, action plus on taking 2006 and 2020. Some action plans are taking for conservation and preservation of the species. Though they have a fine one factor, but there are a multiple factors or reducing their populations. And these factors may be huge application of the pesticides in the paddy field. Also, reduction in food availability may be another of the disease and habitat loss. If you see, there is no tall plants in India now. All are cutting. A lot of seeds are there, not only one factor is responsible. I have already mentioned uh, out of that is a power gift infrastructure. That is another important uh, factor in the vulture habitat and also reduction of food availability. Diseases like in 20, coronavirus are coming and lots of uh, human beings are lost. Life way. There may be some uh, virus attack during that time. Another is habitat loss. And also mainly another important factor is the disturbance from activity and climate changes. Here is a factor uh, have to be addressed to solve the consumption of the uh, vultures. And also I have a request that government and national history of um, history of Bombay national history cannot do alone, cannot solve the problem. Therefore, therefore, the NGO and interested individuals should include to solve the problem. This is uh, my uh, few words. With these few words, I have uh, opening this webinar uh, to pick on uh, attractive breeding and conservation of Indian vulture species. I thanks all the members of. Equinox and all the participants around the world. Thanks all. And also, specifically, I have thanks Dr. Sofin R. Renedi. Uh, Renedi, uh, I request him to 
Yes, yes, yes. Am I audible now? Okay. Thank you very much, and um, uh, good evening, and uh, good evening to the people in India, and good afternoon, and good morning to everybody else. Um, I have a slideshow. Um, I hope all of you are aware that today we are talking about the Vultures and vultures are very important birds. Can you see the slide show? Hello. No. 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 No, sir. Nothing. Right. Can you see it now? No, sir. Let me know when you you can see it. OK, very good. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, talk. And I hope the Everybody is aware that there is a very big, huge vulture crisis all over the world. And not only in India, but uh, vultures are found all different on different continent, uh, Africa, America, Europe, Asia, except Australia and Antarctic and Antarctica. Vultures are found everywhere. And vultures play a very, very important role. And that's why we are working on the vultures 
and vultures are very fascinating very beautiful large bird which particularly scavenge um in india we are working with the government of india and with uh, different state governments so central government for india the uh, condition is uh, there is a one central government and there are state governments so wherever we are working in different states we are working with the state government like in haryana we are working with the haryana forest department in uh, assam with the uh, assam forest department so on so in different states we are working with the local governments and our main aim is to save the vultures so we who we are we are bombay natural history society that means bnhs you can see the logo in the left corner and it itself tell that we have hornbill as a our logo hornbill is also you must be knowing that very important bird to save our tropical forest and bnhs is a very old ngo almost 136 year old it was started when um uh, there was a british raj in india and uh, in 1883 it was started and it was started by like minded people who wanted to share their knowledge and on the same path dr salim ali uh, and various scientists work and we are particularly working in birds and in this project we are working on the vultures so these different agencies are working with us those are ministry of environment and forests and various ngos like rspb rspb is the royal society for protection of birds then zsl these different ngos are helping us to raise the money and they are advising us on the upkeeping of the vultures so veterinary ideas veterinary uh, information they are giving us Indians know about the vultures from long, long, long time. Even our epic uh, Ramayana also has a character name as Jatayu. So, so Indians know about the different wildlife around them, and they used to incorporate all these characters in their stories. And not only. uh we have the this cultural thing but india is a mega diverse country so we have a very big biodiversity and not only in case of insects birds reptiles mammals particularly talking about vultures also we have a very big biodiversity we have nine species of vultures which are seldomly seen on one place in any of the continents so all all over the world there are 23 species of vultures out of that nine are found in india the upper big chunk you are seeing in the green are all gypsy vultures that means typical vulture, vultures with a very long neck and these vultures live in a flock they live in a group so these are all gypsy vultures and very important for mankind because all of them stay together in a very big flock and they descend on the cattle carcass or whatever dead dying animal and they finish the carcass very quickly so these five gypsy species are very important species and below that there are other four species like king vulture egyptian vulture cinereus and bearded vultures these are also very important species but these are solitary species so they are uh living in a small group or in a pair or uh, they are uh, found in a uh, uh, solitary single also so these nine species but you can see out of the nine eight of them are endangered either critically when they are uh, written in a red uh, alphabets they are critically endangered then some of them are endangered so none of them is enjoying a very good status in nature except the griffon vulture only the griffon vulture which is a migratory to india has somehow good status but all others are suffering 
drastically, dramatically. So why should one save the vultures? Because vultures are most efficient. They can reach to the dead animal very quickly. You can imagine if there is something dead animal, it is very easy to reach there by the flight through the sky. Very easy. Instead of walking, say, four kilometers, five kilometers, even the other scavengers ha may have a very good uh, uh, vision. They may have a very good sense of smell like hyena or dogs. But reaching there, it is easy through the skyway. So vultures are very efficient and they quickly consume the carcass. So it, it do not give chance the, to the bacteria, to the virus to propagate in the dead animal, in the meat. And before any spread of disease, the vulture consume the carcass. And the vultures have a very acidic pH in their stomach. Very acidic. And that's why they can digest a lot of bacteria and all these foul smelling, dead, decaying material. So they are very efficient, not only reaching to the carcass, they are very efficient in consuming the carcass and the rotting meat also. And that's how they can control the pollution. If the carcass will lie there, it will pollute. It will smell foul. So that is the air pollution. It will uh, pollute our water sources and soil also. And by doing these good duties to the mankind, this vulture balance the ecosystem. And that's why we must save the vultures. So, BNHS is focusing mainly on these three species. On the left side, you can see the white back vulture. And here it is a slender bill vulture. And this one is the long bill vulture. But not only that, I am showing you only these three species. I will show you the other vultures also. The other vultures are Himalayan griffon. Himalayan grif griffon breed at a height. So it breed in the high Himalayas. And when there is a very, very cold weather, it's young birds, not the adult. It's young vultures like juveniles and sub adult come to the plains in India. So it is also important for us. Then here are also the Himalayan griffons and here are also the Eurasian griffon or nowadays called as griffon vultures. You can see how matching coloring feathers they have to their environment. So these are really wonderful birds which can match to the environment. And here it is a very beautiful, very charming bird. It is called as bearded vulture. Very rare bird also. It also lives in high Himalayas and uh, its other name is Lamargia. This vulture has a speciality that it can take bones from the dead animal and it carries the bones, very big bones in its talons, take it to a some certain height and drop it on the rocks. And when the bone fall on the rocks, it shattered. And then this vulture again come down and it feed on the bones. So vultures are such an efficient bird that they not only feed on the viscera, not only the skin, muscles, but they finish the bones also. So that's why India is a very, very important area for conservation of this biodiversity. Here you can see a very handsome bird. It is called as a cinereous vulture. Cinereous vultures are winter visitor to India. And this one is the king vulture because it has a very, very nice head, red color head. So its other name is, as uh, it is called as a red-headed vulture, Sarcogyps calvus. So this is also called as a king vulture of Asia and it is a solitary bird. So only one or two birds can be seen at one place. And these small beautiful birds are called as a Egyptian vultures. Very nice color. When they are adult, they, they are very nice white color with yellow beak and black light feathers. Fondly, these birds were called as a furrowed chicken. That means 
in old ancient time these vultures were found near the egypt area and egypt you must be knowing that the priests are called as pharaohs so fondly these birds were called as a pharaoh chicken the vultures have a very important place in the mythology and in the culture of egypt also uh, vultures are actually raptors that means they are the hunting birds but in the time of evolution vultures have left active hunting now a days vulture don't hunt but they feed only on the dead animals so that save their energy and at the same time the dead meat from the nature is consumed so the energy is utilized the biomass is also utilized and for that purpose the vultures still retain their very sharp and powerful beak and powerful talons and that's these birds are big bodied birds and they live in a group they live in a flock if it is a very very hunting bird then it won't tolerate other bird but since vultures are feeding on a dead animal so they can tolerate other birds around it and in fact a group a bird flock is the power for vultures this is a photograph in delhi as we were discussing there are not only biodiversity that there is not only a diverse diversity in the numbers there used to be a population wise huge number used to be in india can you see this photograph nicely not only in the foreground but vultures used to be on the top of the buildings also so this photograph was taken in new delhi and that time can you imagine how many vultures are there thousands and thousands of vultures used to be there so delhi was not only capital of india but that was the capital of vultures also and we tried to calculate with a mathematical formula that how many vultures used to be there in those days so the answer is there used to be around 4 crore vultures in india only okay so that was the population so common was the bird then what is the problem now why we have to save these vultures and from what so while working in the kevla dev national park sorry kevla dev national park that is a well known as a bharatpur bird sanctuary but its proper name is kevla dev national park uh, we found that the vultures were declining as we were working there we are ornithologists working on birds we had some routine counts in the national park and in the routine counts we started finding that the vultures were declining in number there we used to found 200 birds in one go during the late 90s we started to get zero vulture in our transit and that's why dr vibhu prakash found for the first time and he published a paper on that that the vultures were declining in india and to confirm whether it was the condition only in bharatpur or it was a nation wide we carried out nation wide surveys all over india we had surveys and in those surveys we found that the vultures were not as there used to be that means they were declined more than 90% everywhere and the people kept on thinking that the vultures the people from the plains thought that the vultures might have gone to the hills and the people in the hills thought that the vultures are more in the plains so they are not here in the hills and that's how nobody actually counted the vultures what is the happening in the vultures and people thought that there could be some problem but we carried out the nationwide surveys and that cleared the actual picture so we started looking in the matter systematically so first we thought that whether there was a insufficient food no food was available and during our surveys we found that the dead animals were lying here and there 
but they were not attended by vultures. That means there were less vultures, but food availability was there. Then the second question was there, if there any problem in habitat? No, because vultures are such a dynamic birds that whenever they are getting tall trees, they are nesting on the tallest tree in their area. But if there are small trees only, like in runoff Kutch or in Gujarat or in Rajasthan, then there are very short trees. And when there is insufficient habitat or insufficient tall trees are there, vulture can nest on a rooftop also. So they are very, very um, uh, in, intelligent birds. And that's why the habitat was not problem for the birds. So we started a vulture care center to study what happening. Is there any diseases or is there any kind of poisoning, heavy metal poisoning? And that's why we kept few vultures in a vulture care center in Pinjor. At the same time, in 2004, two scientists from US, they were working in Pakistan and they found that a diclofenac, a NSID, that means a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. If this drug is given to the cattle and the meat from this cattle is consumed by vultures, then vulture dies. And it was a groundbreaking research. What happened actually? When the animal is administered this injection of diclofenac, then the drug goes to its body and the liver and kidney start functioning of that animal. It is a mammal, you know. And in mammal, the liver and kidney are detoxifying organs. So when the function of detoxification is going on, the excess drug is taken out in the liver and kidney. And in case, if the animal is sick by some disease, the animal dies, then this drug remains more in more quantity in the liver and kidneys. It cannot be thrown out. If the animal dies, then the, this drug gets trapped in the body of that animal. And what is vulture doing? Vulture's duty is to scavenge. So vultures go to the dead animal, they feed on it. And particularly gyps vultures, as I mentioned, they have the long neck and they live in a group. So when they are feeding the viscera to the soft organ in the animal, and there are more chances that they are getting the liver and kidneys. And these wide back vultures, slender bill vulture, long bill vulture, these vultures get this heavy dose of diclofenac. When this diclofenac enters the bird's body, it completely damage the bird's kidney. And as vulture's kidney cannot digest or cannot throw out this diclofenac and it get damaged, it stops functioning. And that causes a disease called visceral gout. This happens because as the kidney is failed, all the uric acid cannot be thrown out and is deposited inside the visceral organs. And that's why visceral gout take place as you are seeing in the picture and the bird dies a very painful death within a week. The another problem is that as the bird is dying after a week or say 10 days, the vulture can travel a very, very long distance and it was very difficult to find the dead birds or their carcasses and to get them analyzed. Fortunately, we had collected samples from all over India and we could analyze our samples as well as. And once the fact was uh, confirmed that the, our vultures were dying due to diclofenac, then the government of India took some quick action. The birds, the vultures were put in the Schedule 1 category. That means they have given the very important position just like a rhino or tiger or elephant. In 2000 only, we arranged a very big meeting where the scientists from all over the world 
came together. We discussed this problem and two solutions were suggested. One was that we should start a captive breeding program and second was we must get a quick ban on the diclofenac, particularly its veterinary use of diclofenac. So the government act very fast and ministry got a ban on the use of uh, diclofenac. We started awareness as well as once we get a ban on the painkiller for cattle, then we must look for the alternative. And that's why we had a tie up with the IVRI, Indian Veterinary Institute, which is the topmost body of the veterinary institute in India. And we found that the meloxicam is the safest drug. It can remove the pain of the cattle. And even if it is consumed by the vultures, it won't harm to the vultures. So we started making pe people aware that they should not use the diclofenac, but they should use the meloxicam. Then the obvious question is that if we successfully ban the drug, then why we need to start a breeding center? The reason is that vultures are very slow breeding birds, just like elephant. Elephant mature after 10 years and after that also it gives birth to a single baby. And after uh, there is a gap between two babies, at least two years. So similar condition in vultures also. And if we we'll take another example, a different kind of animal from biology, then there are different animals which have different way of breeding. So, for example, rabbit, rat, these are small, small bodied animals, but these animals breed very fast, but they live for a shorter life also. So, vulture is not from that cat category, vulture is from elephant type of category that is called as a K selection. There are two kinds of selection. One is R and one is K. So vultures are slow breeding birds and that's why we must help the vultures to breed. That's why we decided that there should be different breeding centers for the vultures in India. So we selected four center, four locations and these are the four locations. The first center started in Haryana, second one come up in the West Bengal, third one in Guwahati and fourth one in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. All our centers have either three or two species. As per the geographical distribution of vultures, we have selected these which species should be kept in which center and accordingly species are there. Um, today I will be talking more about the Guwahati centers and actually all our centers, all these, these are called as VCBC, Vulture Conservation Breeding Centers. All our centers have a same plan that is a very big aviary called as colony aviary, smaller aviaries, those are holding aviary, nursery aviary or isolation aviaries. Then the quarantine aviaries where the birds are kept separately and the office building. So let us see how is the infrastructure. Whenever there is a uh, VCBC, we have a power fencing, which is a solar power fencing in this case. And that is because this is the elephant prone area. And even ele if elephant are not there, there are chances stray cattle or even leopards or any other wild animal may try to enter the center as we are feeding the birds meat mainly. And that's why we, we want to keep all the other animals away. And that's why this is a solar power fencing. Then there is a quarantine aviary. Uh, I hope nowadays everybody is well aware ab about the word quarantine. In vultures also it is very important. And last 20 years, we are following this uh, method for the vultures. Whenever a new bird is coming to our center, for first 45 days, 
we are keeping these birds in the quarantine aviary, which is a nearby to our actual center, near to the main center. After completing a period of 45 days, during which vultures complete their all test, blood test, fecal sample test, all these tests are completed. And once we are satisfied with the birds that these birds are healthy, then only we transfer these birds to a smaller aviary in our center. Although I'm calling it smaller, it is not very small. It is a 20 by 20 where at least four to six birds can be kept together. After this holding aviary, we transferred the birds to the actual big aviary, which is a very, very big aviary. It is 100 feet by 40 feet and it is a 22 feet tall. So it is a aviary where vultures can stay together, fly wherever they want to go. There is not a single pillar inside. So there are very few chances of accident and there is a chain link on the sides as well as the top. So there is a good airflow inside. The bird can enjoy the sun and rain and um, feeding and water provision can be done from outside only. So there is a minimal contact of our staff, minimal contact of the human being with the vultures. So our vultures are kept as wild as they are otherwise. So when we are going to release these birds, they will be wild vultures, not tame vultures. So that is called as a imprinting. We are avoiding this imprinting. Otherwise, it will be problematic to leave this vulture back to the wild. And there is a small office room where we carry out um, our lab testing. And there are different small tests can be done, which are basic tests of the blood and fecal samples. Uh, and uh, the CCTV is also in this um, office room. So in case of Assam, we have two species, white back vulture, it is also called as a white rump vulture or oriental white back vulture because in Africa also similar species is there. So in India, we have white back vulture and slender bill vulture. Uh, as we are keeping these vultures in our center, our main job is to keep their houses clean. I am not calling these as the cages, but these are the houses. The birds house is called as a aviaries. Aves means birds, aviaries means bird houses. And it is very difficult. It is a very tough job to keep all the area safe as vultures feed on the carcasses on the dead animals. So it is very crucial to keep the area clean and neat. Uh, there is a schedule of their checking and care. So you can see there are some cot like structure in the left side photo. Uh, vultures like to nest at a height and that's why we are providing them nest ledges. These are called as nest ledges. And these nest ledges are maintained, checked, or even changed once in a year. And similarly, once in a year, the birds are randomly caught. Their weight is checked, whether they are healthy, then their samples are taken. You must be wondering, as we are breeding these birds, from where we got the breeding birds. So for that purpose, there are different methods. Either you have to collect the young birds. For that purpose, you have to climb up tall trees and collect the young birds. Or you have to do the trapping or you have to use the rescued bird. So let us talk about the nestling collection or the collection of young birds. Why we should collect the young birds? Because in case of vultures, Vultures can be categorized in three age groups. The first group is juvenile. From zero to first year, 
the birds are juvenile they have a certain kind of a feather structure after first year the birds are called as a sub adult that stage remain up to the fifth year and after fifth year the bird is called as a adult so it is co considered as a mature after five years unfortunately the bird with age five years and bird with age of say 50 years both of them would look similar because their feather pattern remains same so when we are bringing the birds for the breeding purpose we don't want to bring much adult bird because that time if we'll bring the adult bird we won't be able to uh, to determine its age and we won't be able to uh, consider whether it is uh, uh, in a breeding phase or not as i told you earlier birds especially vultures are long living birds so it is said that vulture can live 60 to 70 years also and especially in captivity so it is very difficult to judge their age and that's why we want to bring maximum young birds the second advantage of bringing young birds is that the young birds take captivity easily compared to the adult birds that's why most of the birds were collected as a young birds um, how we collected them we have to climb up a tall tree then collect the young bird very carefully lower it down take it to the forest office take proper papers for that bring it to our isolation aviaries that is the aviaries are converted to a small nest like structure and that's why these aviaries which are actually quarantine aviaries are now converted to nursery aviaries as the name suggests nursery the birds are kept there in a small group if we will keep a single bird there and go there and feed it then the vultures start thinking that okay i am a human baby and that we don't want we want that bird should understand that it is a vulture and that's why the vulture must keep in a group in a flock and that's how the bird understand that it is a bird and there is a special structure for the bird to do the exercise jumping exercise for its wings and that's all and there is a special schedule for the young birds for their feeding as the young bird cannot feed on a very solid food its parents also feed it a uh, liquid food so for the young birds have a special regime of feeding and slowly we start giving them solid food so here you can see how the bird grow from a small cottony um, bird that can be fitted in our palm such a small bird it has to grow a very huge large free flying bird and all this development has to take place within 4 to 5 months only so you can imagine that their body growth take place very fast it is very efficient and their bone has to be formed their feather has to be formed and it has to be converted from a cottony ball to a flying machine and that's why the birds the young birds need a good attention we have taken some opportunities we have collected some birds those were uh, fallen from the nest or th those who have some accident or poisoning and we rescued these birds and we joined these birds in the breeding stock at our center and this is how we transported these birds these birds are transported in special plywood boxes and these boxes are not very huge but they are sufficient to accommodate a vulture and it avoid the bird fluttering its wings so that is for the safety of the bird and sometimes the birds are even taken to the center by flight 
so that's how we take care of the birds whenever a new bird arrive to our center we first put a microchip to its pectoral muscles the microchip remain there lifelong and with help of a microchip reader we can assure that which bird it is but every time we don't handle the birds and we need to know which bird is which one and for that purpose we put a pvc ring the ring is numbered and with help of this ring we can find out the identity of that bird uh whenever a new bird come to our center we check it thoroughly we take samples and if there is some problem we give it a treatment as well as then finally we move this birds to the colony aviary uh these birds start their routine and without disturbing the birds we want to monitor them that's why we had put special cameras in the colony aviary and these cameras can be uh, monitored from our office room the birds start breeding in the winter season it take at least 4 to 5 years to mature after that the birds start breeding in the winter on the onset of winter the birds start selecting their nest locations as we have provided them the nest ledges and we provide them the nest material that means the twigs and leaves are provided in the aviaries the vultures collect their own material and take it to the breeding ledges nesting ledges and the bird prepare their own nest so their instinct of preparing nest and taking care of their young one remain constant because we want to release all these birds back to wild we don't want to make them like a pet animal we want them completely wild animal they should Uh, they should choose their partner they should make their own nest they should incubate it they should raise their young birds okay so that's why everything happens as in nature uh in the winter the birds incubate their egg for around 55 days that means almost two months are engaged and after that a small tiny cotton ball come out and both mother and father take care of their young birds uh as the society of vulture is a very very advanced in the vulture society you can see that the both vultures are looking same or similar so you cannot differentiate male and female so they are called as a monomorphic in the scientific language why it is so because male and female except egg laying they are doing all the duties together and that's why they are looking or they have the same capabilities that's why vultures are very advanced society the vultures pair for life that means once they form a pair they keep on it till their death so very interesting kind of a social structure is there as mother and father both have a small bag like thing at the base of their neck which is called as a crop both of them can carry meat in their crop and they provide the meat to the young bird and young bird has only two duties one thing is it has to eat and the other thing it has to do the exercise wing flapping the vulture young one do the wing flapping which is a very important exercise for it and at the end of fifth month the vulture can that mean the young bird can start flying freely then it follow its mother and father and if it in the nature then it can feed on itself also so these points i have already explained you that there is a key selection and the birds are large bodied birds long living and monomorphic that male and female looking same 
in case of uh, our center in assam we have so far um, bred so many birds and the breeding started uh, for the first time in 11 12 and more than 50 birds have been born in this center the birds are kept in all our four centers are breeding now we have successfully bred all the three species earlier to this uh, project earlier to this captive breeding program uh, nobody had kept vulture especially for the breeding purpose but this kind of a breeding on a large scale was done for the first time for the reintroduction purpose and uh, our centers in pinjor that is in haryana and in rajabhat khawa that means in west bengal have already started releasing vultures back to the wild which is a very complicated uh, procedure we have to put ptt on their back that means small transmitter and uh, then we have to release these birds to the wilderness but before releasing our vultures back to the wild we must ensure that these vultures must go to safe area and their habitat and the nature should be safe safe from what safe from diclofenac that is the, uh, a kind of a nsid and safe from other problematic issues also like there are some problematic things electrocution poisoning secondary poisoning unintentional poisoning and the area where we are going to reintroduce this bird must be free from all these problems so for that purpose we have to start a program called as vulture safe zone in india we are working at different locations and at these areas we are trying to make safe zone vulture safe zones for the reintroduction purpose as well as for the for saving the vulture in situ in assam we have started vulture safe zone in the upper assam covering 14 districts uh, this is a very huge area i think you can get an idea that it is a 100 km radius circle and why 100 km because vultures can fly at least 100 km in one day in search of food so we have considered that at least the vulture can go in any direction so we have taken this much area and this much area we must make this is the minimum area we must make safe for vultures and for that purpose we are carrying out awareness program awareness program and advocacy advocacy we are carrying out surveys surveys of wild vulture population whether food availability is there whether nesting habitat is there and we are sampling the cattle carcasses also there are some other problems i have mentioned like poisoning electrocution and accident so maybe road accident maybe train accident and the thing the medicine that has taken the biggest toll of vulture population was diclofenac so we must ensure that there is no availability of diclofenac for the veterinary purpose so we have to prove it by two ways one thing is that we have to carry out pharmacy surveys where such kind of medicines are sold so fortunately after our efforts the diclofenac sale in assam has reduced and the safe drug that is meloxicam is increasing you can see it from this pie chart and we have to monitor the vulture colonies whatever small number of vultures remaining in the nature we must look for those birds and look whether they are breeding properly whether their um, percentage of success 
is normal or natural and we must get the people involved in this um, vulture awareness program so we get help from different people here you can see one of the great personality uh, mr jadav paying who has gone who has got the padma bhushan and he has planted a complete jungle on the bank of river brahmaputra so we take help from different people from local people here you can see a local lady has prepared a wonderful design of vultures on her uh, it is a kind of a towel for those those people outside from assam uh, let me explain that it is a kind of a towel and it is used for particularly felicitation it is uh, given to the guests it is given to the honored people and so the design on this particular cloth matters a lot in assam it is called as a gamosa uh, and in a nutshell i would like to tell all of you that what we have seen so far meloxicam is the safest drug and uh, if you are keeping tab with the vulture news you must have come across another news today that there is another medicine that is a tolfemic acid has been found as a safe drug that is a second drug uh, found as a safe for vultures then we should not encourage our veterinarians or the people who are treating the animals we should not encourage them to use diclofenac but we should tell them that diclofenac has caused such a havoc in our wildlife and we must keep ourselves updated about the vultures and whatever the things are going there and that is the thing what we want that when we will be releasing our vultures back to the wild they should start breeding naturally and that is our ultimate goal so that's why we are planning we are releasing our vultures by a method called as soft release vultures are not just we we are not just opening the door and releasing all the vultures to the nature we are releasing them very slowly and very carefully i would like to show you a small clipping uh, it is a clipping from the aviaries and that will give you a better idea how the vultures do in the captivity can everybody see this yes sir okay yes sir so this is the view from a big colony aviary and why one of the vulture was chasing the other birds because it has own that nest and that bird has selected that lays as its own nest it is a nest number 16 and the bird is a slender bill vulture and the female is incubating an egg vulture egg is a very big in size here you can see that after 55 days the bird hatch and you can see a small head coming out and the bird is feeding to the young bird so this is a slender bill vulture we have numbered the nest we have numbered the bird also so there is a yellow color ring on the leg of the vulture so we can identify which bird is coming which bird is going this is the mother and after say a couple of month the young bird has grown in size and the adult is feeding to the young bird the young bird has been grown up well and it keep on demanding food so parent has a great job they have to always be ready with food and this food is carried out at the base uh, in a crop at the base of their throat
so here you can see both parents male as well as female both of them are there and the young bird is just begging food and one of the bird got irritated how much i am going to bring the food for the young bird but the other bird keep on feeding passionately so this is a big aviary very big aviary you can see we are providing the food at the ground somewhere here and when we are providing the food we just open this window and we just put the food through the window so we are not coming in contact of the vulture and the parents come to the ground they collect the food and here at the end of fifth month you can see the bird has come down it can fly freely now and it has to compete with the other birds in the flock and it is feeding itself so a free bird now and a successful breeding so this was the small clipping i had taken when the bird bred for the first time it was first time in the world when we bred the slender bill vulture in captivity so this is the way we are covering areas we are carrying out transacts and before releasing actual our birds which are born in captivity we put this kind of transmitter on the back of vultures which are surrogate species so you can see we are putting a transmitter on the back of the vulture there is another tag on its wing orange color tag for india we are using orange color tag for nepal we are using yellow color tags and these tags are having numbers so this is a special aviary called as a release aviary before actual release we are keeping the birds in these aviaries so he can, here you can see the release aviary and here is the control room for that aviary from here we can open the gate of this aviary when we want to release the birds and here we are providing food for the our vulture as well as for the wild vulture and here are the camera trap also so that we study well the behavior of our vultures so here you can see the vultures are coming out of the aviary and they will be feeding on this carcasses and uh, as the release program was successful it those were really wonderful moments uh, all moments are not i am showing uh, because of the time constraint constraint i cannot show all the things but here you can see the captive birds are coming out then these are the photograph taken in the wild that the vultures started flying high they started perching very high and they move a really long distance so that's how all the program work it is a lengthy process it is a really very slow process and we need a, a really really patience for this process uh i hope you could hear all what uh, the thing i was talking about i hope you have seen the slides uh if you have any questions kindly go ahead thank you sir. hello sir yeah hello sir yeah hello, sir. sure yes uh, yes i can you hear you for your nice talk and very very informative talks i am very thank happy you. that bhalsa culture is uh, completely successful uh, in assam or in india uh, now question is that how many youngs uh, still you have developed and release from guwahati center or from india center 
uh, talking about see all these centers were started at different time frame isn't it so pinjo yes, center was started first into um, we have started working there right from 2004 on particularly on breeding so we have started release program from pinjo uh, last year we have released eight birds white back vultures from pinjo center this year we have started release program from west bengal centers so from west bengal we have released 10 white back vultures uh, we are still planning for assam center and uh, in the near future we'll be sta uh, starting the release from assam also the reason is that it is a slow process we have to first construct a release aviary we have to attract the wild vulture we want our vulture mix with the wild vulture also and then we have to slowly release them to the natural flock so it is a time consuming process but breeding is successful so far more than 50 birds born in our captivity in assam there are lot many uh, more than 80 birds born in west bengal more than 300 uh, birds born in pinjor centers so that's where the breeding is successful for all the three species wide back vulture slender bill and long bill vulture thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, yes, thank you else? thank you sachin sir thank you riman sir for your question we have some questions from the audience uh, it is from rashmita gopoi she asks um, as we all know vultures scavenge for the dead as a source of food and thereby keep the surroundings clean but with their disappearance the ecosystem has severely suffered with diseases do you think once they have completely disappeared there are more chances of outbreaks as we have seen with the current pandemic right so was that a question a question yes sir that was a question yeah so yeah there are lot of uh, chances um, the best example i would like to give you anthrax okay so anthrax is a very dangerous disease of mammals particularly and um, uh, what happens when when the animal suppose a cattle dies due to anthrax there are the bac bacteria of anthrax remain in the body of that animal if vulture will come vultures will come very quickly and they will consume and when the animal dies after certain period the bacteria start forming a, a a different kind of phase of their life so that is a kind of spore formation or uh, uh, they they get in a different stage which remain for long time in a dormant condition but as the vultures are coming very quickly they are feeding the meat whatever it is and they are digesting the bacteria as they are so they are not giving chance to the bacteria to form a spore and that's how vultures act as a barrier between the spread of the disease such so there are many such diseases like uh, fmd diseases are there and there are many if uh, uh, if you will see that if there are uh, even a dog can feed on the cattle carcass but the chances are that dogs are not as efficient as the vultures are the second thing is that dogs or hyenas or jackals are mammals so there are chances of this bacteria or viruses jumping from one mammal to other mammal easily but there are relatively less chances of transfer uh, transfer uh, transmitting these bacteria viruses or whatever pathogens from mammals to birds and that's why it is always welcome that our vultures should clean these carcasses and the vultures have a very wonderful capacity to control the spread of disease and all these things are happening in a natural way and that's why saving vulture is a preferred way thank you okay thank you sir uh, there is another question for a uh, press to one kim singh sorry if i mispronounced your name uh, he asks sir as the nests inside uh, certain as the nest inside the breeding center are provided ready made for by humans uh, will it not affect the natural ability of the bird to build their nest as done by their wild counterparts or or are the parents kept for there for lifetime 
can you repeat the question uh, so he asks as the net nest inside the breeding center are provided by the human will it not affect the natural ability of the bird to build their nest as done by their wild counterparts yeah yeah yes. uh, i think you must have miss a few thing we have provide we have not given them ready nest we have provided them a nest ledge and vultures and all kind of wild animals act due to uh, their natural instinct nobody teach to even the vulture in wild nobody teach them to build a nest so if we are providing them nest ledge they are constructing their nest themselves we are providing simply a ledge a cot like structure and we are providing some twigs and leaves to the vultures on the ground vulture come to the ground they collect the whatever the twigs they like they carry it to the nest and they prepare a nest themselves so they have this instinct uh, continues as the thing is that vultures act with their instinct this instinct remain constant nobody teach a fish to swim isn't it in the same way we need not teach them but we need to keep their activities as vultures are long living birds we must give them some activities or we must keep them reminding their thing and the birds born in our captivity are also taken care of uh, by their parents only so when they are young they are quite active and they understand that we are born in a nest and that's how when we will be releasing our birds back to the wild there there will be two things one thing that they are raised by their parents so they know how to behave mm -hmm. and as they have instinct they know that they should collect the nest material construct a nest and then lay in it one additional thing is that we are going to release them by a soft release method and what is the advantage of this soft release our vultures will be mixing with the wild vultures and the vultures follow each other so they would be learning from the wild population as well and as they will increase their intelligence their experience with mixing with the wild animals they will do um, their natural ways okay Okay. Thank you, sir. There is another question by Mr. Abhishek Khersa. He asks how to make the emerging students aware worldwide to focus on such important aspects of wildlife. Usually there is more of a monetary mindset among majority of people than helping out the environmental aspects, which is not helping the future of environmental issues. Apart from webinars, what other effective plans can be taken so that more people take part in such conser conservation methods of plants and animals? Apart from webinars, see, when you have some interest, then you have a lot of ways. There are people who are interested, who have hobbies of drawing, painting, photography, what they do. They join the classes, they practice their hobbies. In a similar way, those people who like nature, they can go for hiking, they can go for um, uh, uh, nature visits nature trails and during all these activities people can keep a small notebook and keep on recording what vultures they saw what birds they saw so bird photography and uh, bird watching are the wonderful tools for those who want to do really something in it and these are very efficient ways just communicate with me or uh, somebody who is working on birds and then you can start studying birds on your own and that will help you a lot not only vultures but you can study other birds also other birds are also threatened or you can uh, practice on other birds uh, watching their activities watching their behavior and then you can correlate this thing with the vultures vulture issues vulture problems and uh, that's why that's how you can develop the things and if you wish, if you are really interested in particularly in wildlife, then you can join the forest services as most of the people here are doing. Or even you can join BNHS, Bombay Naturalistic Society. There are a lot of 
in youth which are giving a lot of exposure to the students to the young minds uh, like bnhs wwf then there must be lot of ngos who are taking people on the nature trails then uh, there are lot of things you can do i hope uh, you can explore more okay thank you sir um there have these were the questions uh sonida says thank you so much sir for giving us such an enlightening information about captive breeding of vultures um welcome thank you um so with this i say we we are have we have reached the end of our webinar session and thank you ranare sir for giving us your time thank you remember bodlo sir for opening uh, opening the event for us we thank you all the participants from different parts of the world who have visited us uh, today and i i hope we you had a wonderful time with us today i thank you for all the ngos that have joined we have we would like to thank asha information uh, asha international uh, sierra uh, asha international then we cameroon we would like to thank uh, nature's beacon from sif sagar thank you for joining with us and attending our event and showing so much interest uh, we would like to thank all the participants here at google meet and all the people watching us live on facebook and uh, youtube we hope you had a wonderful time with us with this i declare my session declare this webinar session closed uh, if you have uh, if you have not filled up the uh, feedback forms please do so they are in the chat boxes i'm giving it to you again if you haven't done so please do so as possible we will be uh, linking down there in the chat box thank you with this i declare thank you very much thank you ranare sir with this i declare thank you. this thank webinar you. session closed thank you everyone for spending this time with us we hope you had a wonderful time thank you